Thursday. The toppings, all for just 99 cents. AM, PM, Super Sunday is absolutely the best thing I've ever tasted. Mm. And I'm not just paying it lip service. This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting System. Crossfire is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Together, winning the world over with the exciting line of 1989 Ford cars. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Merrill Lynch, an investment firm built on a tradition of trust. From Washington, Crossfire. On the left, Tom Brayton. On the right, Pat Buchanan. Tonight, behind closed doors. In the crossfire, Jordan Lawrence, litigation director for Concerned Women for America. And in San Francisco, Matthew Coles of the Northern California ACLU. Good evening. Welcome to Crossfire. Can young people of marriageable age continue to play by the rules of the new morality? If they do, watch out for Mrs. Smith. And listen to this. Mrs. Smith, a grandmotherly Californian, rented an apartment to a nice young couple. But when she found out the couple was unmarried, she changed her mind about their being nice. Not only that, she returned their check and refused them a lease. Mrs. Smith is of the old-time religion. The Bible forbids fornication. Mrs. Smith says it forbids fornication 32 times. But the state of California does not. The couple sued under California's fair housing law and won. Mrs. Smith has appealed and the case may be headed for the Supreme Court. Do these kids have a right to pay for a roof over their heads? Or does Mrs. Smith have a right to the free exercise of her religion? Pat? Mr. Coles of the ACLU, will you explain to us why this Christian woman should be forced to rent an apartment to a couple that is shacking up? Specifically, can this California ordinance really trump the, fir uh, the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States? Well, she's not being forced to rent to someone who's shacking up, and the California law is not trumping the First Amendment. She doesn't have to rent to anyone at all. If she so objects to the fair housing law, she can simply remove her unit from the market. The bottom line, I think, is that the free exercise clause of the Constitution doesn't give someone liberty to do anything they want based on their religious beliefs. They can't refuse to pay taxes. They can't engage in polygamy. The, the government may not tell someone that they can't believe something or impose a certain orthodoxy on them. But by the same token, someone cannot use their religious beliefs to run roughshod over our civil right, rights Mr. laws. Mr. Coles, what this woman is doing is nothing more and nothing less than 19 California state colleges do. None of those colleges permits unwed students to shack up on campus. Now, why should this Christian woman be forced to do something that the state of California doesn't require its own state institutions to do? I don't know that the state colleges are exempt from the Fair Housing Act. I don't think they have. And if someone hasn't complained about that yet, maybe someone will. Well, they're, you they're specifically permitted under state law to do that. They, every state college, every university, including Berkeley, allows uh, or forbids unmarried couples to, to room together. Uh, we're not you know, asking... Berkeley has unmarried student housing and allows unmarried students to live together. Unmarried students cannot room together, male and female adult students, in any state university or state college in the state of California. We had a witness that said that at our trial. Well, Mr. Was Lawrence, wrong. Mr. Lawrence, let's get back to the case before us. You, you're, you're handling it on, on behalf of, you're the litigation director for uh, Concerned Women for America. That's correct. And Concerned Women for America is backing Mrs. Smith. That's and correct. her appeal. Now, I want to ask you, there are three million young Americans or old, according to the Census Bureau, who are living together in this country in a unmarried state. Are they all sinners? Well, I think it, different people have different points of view on that. Mrs. Smith thinks so, and I think that that right is protected. I think the issue here is, is that, do we have a big well, problem of homeless, uh, uh, unmarried couples wandering the streets in need of housing? We don't. I think the state of California has passed a, uh, passed a law that's an ideological statement on what they think of the morality of well, the sexuality. Well, no, wait a minute. The law says you cannot discriminate in private housing by reason of race, sex, nationality, age, or marital status. It seems to me that last one, marital status, merely takes account of the fact that millions of young people are choosing to live together and to try marriage, companionate marriage, 
to try it out and say, all right, we want to get married later, or we don't. What's wrong with that? Well, if they want to do it, they can find somewhere else to live. I don't think that the state of California has the right to push that kind of morality down the throat of Mrs. Smith and say to you, we're going to punish you, fine you, force you to put things up in your apartment saying that you're a discriminator if you refuse because you're religious. Mr. Coles, to these Mr. People. Coles, why did they, when this couple went to see Mrs. Smith, they lied to her. They said they were married. And so she said, all right, she rents them the apartment. Then she finds out they're shacking up. She's a Christian woman. To her, this is a sin. She doesn't want to condone it. It violates her faith. What about her First Amendment rights to practice her own religion in her own property? I, I think she has the right to practice her own religion in her own property. When she enters the commercial rent real estate market, that's another matter entirely. If she believed that black people were somehow not proper tenants, she'd not be allowed to act on that. She'd not be allowed to refuse to rent somebody because of their religious well, beliefs. Mr. Coles, we're not talking about something that people cannot, people cannot change the fact that they're black or white. They but can we certainly are talking change their... here about behavior. Suppose the guy showed up with three girls. Would she have to rent to them too? She certainly couldn't refuse on the basis of marital status. Well, that's I what we're talking it... about. But, but this notion you're drawing between behavior, I mean, certainly religion is a state that one can change or not change. That's protected by California law as well. And the major beneficiaries of this law have been families with children who have gotten into apartments where landlords previously refused to rent to families with children. Those are but the major beneficiaries. we're not beneficiaries. talking about that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people engaged in a situation she finds deeply offensive. Let me give well, you an minute, example. Pat. Well, Let me you give you another example. Hold it. Tom, suppose a woman was a strict Baptist, and she said, you folks don't drink, do you? And they say, no, we don't. And then they find out they're drinking liquor, and she says, look, I don't want that done on my premises. It is my property, so you have to go. It seems to me she ought to be able to say that if that's to her apartment. Perhaps she can under California law, and perhaps she can't. Well, as, long as, the, as long as the drinking does not constitute a public nuisance, I don't see why uh, I mean, why I mean she you, would you would disagree. Why can't she have her well, own? Well, look, view? how do you know? How do you know that this young people, these young people intended to live in sin, as Mrs. Smith said? Maybe they were chaste. You, they moved it. Why did they lie? They told Obviously, her. To, to stave off the kind of discrimination they were eventually hit with. It's a bad way to do it, but it's not surprising given what happened. I well, I, uh, they, they, uh, uh, they have basically admitted that they were doing it. The judge in the case, even though he ruled against us, said that it was obvious that there was sexual activity going on. So there wasn't, uh, I mean, that was know. never an issue. He said just from the evidence that was put forward in the case. I mean, come and, on, Mr. Braden, if well, a man I, and woman go to every night into the same room, I mean, even a man of, of, of your experience should know something might be going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, I, if they I'm would sell it, whether why didn't you, they say so? Does, does <laughs> Mrs. Smith's free exercise of religion permit her to you be a keyhole peeper and to make sure that those people are sinning? She didn't do that. She just no. said, I'm not going to rent it to you if you're unmarried and living together. See, I, I don't think that the state of California has a compelling state interest just to roll over someone's religious rights for any reason at all. I, I'm kind of well, shocked that the Mr. ACLU... Mr. Coles, it to me, you're an ACLU man. It seems to me that, I mean, whatever you stood for, it was the every, sort of pluralism. People who have religious views have them, people who don't have them. What California is trying to do here is to impose a certain kind of morality, in other words, the acceptability of cohabiting outside of marriage, upon people who don't believe in that. Well, I, I mean, we do believe in, in free exercise of religion. We believe that the state cannot say to somebody that you can't hold a certain belief and that you can't engage in religious practices. What Why Mrs. Aren't you Smith is saying. Her? Why aren't what's you that? defending her? Well, among Why other things, we have. Up for her uh, right? She's no, among other here. things, we. Among other things, we haven't been asked, but Mrs. Smith, it seems to me, is going far beyond religious exercise and saying, I wish to make the dictates of my religion my basis for operations in the commercial marketplace. All right, Mr. Course, Coles, Mr. Coles yeah. we have to take a break for a commercial. Mr. Lawrence, we have to take a break. When we get back, how far does the free exercise of religion go? How far can you carry it? We'll be right back. single one of these imports offers you as much car for your money as the world's best-selling car. In fact, Ford Escort offers the features they do. Plus air conditioning, premium sound system, tape cassette player, 
and a 660 powertrain warranty, all for less money, making Ford Escort a better value and leaving the imports in the dark. Get 2.9% financing or $500 cash bonus on 89 Ford Escort. President Bush attacked the budget deficit tonight in a speech Inflation before Congress. Inflation concerns swept Wall Street new today. The Dow Jones average seesawed all day, closing up. The new administration's proposed budget puts less Change. emphasis on the... Twists, turns, the unexpected. To protect your financial... To trust someone who knows how to deal with change. Perhaps that's why investments with Merrill Lynch grew by $40 billion last year. Merrill Lynch, a tradition of trust. On CNN's Prime News, she went underground in the name of research. And how has she fared? Find out as Stefania Fellini ends her four months in a cave. Tonight, 8 Eastern on CNN. Welcome back to Crossfire. We're discussing the case of Mrs. Smith, who unlawfully, in California unlawfully, refused to rent an apartment to an unmarried couple. Our guests are Jordan Law or uh, Matthew Cole, staff attorney for the ACLU of Northern California, and Jordan Lawrence, who is the litigation director for Concerned Women of America, which has taken up Mrs. Smith's case. Mrs. Smith has a religious reason for her, uh, her refusal to rent, and she bases her case on the First Amendment, the free right. exercise of religion. Right. Now, I want to know, Mr. Lawrence, would the free exercise of religion, could she say, I refuse to rent my house to a man who gambles or who has ever stolen money or uh, who has been guilty of coveting, which the Bible for, forbids? I, I think so. I think so. There's nothing in state law that forbids any of that. And I think uh, a landlord is able to uh, determine the character of the possible tenants and determine whether they want to rent to somebody. You can say, I believe, I believe that Mr. Lawrence covets and therefore, I won't rent to him. Mm -hmm. I think the state, that that's the state protected. Has no, has no interest in in your having a roof over your head that uh, Mrs. Smith's religion can't interfere with. Under the fair housing laws, you can't sue for covetousness discrimination. It's got to be race, religion, the sex, those types right, of Mr. things. Mr. Coles, let me get back into this. I really want to ask the ACLU. I can't understand this. You seem to be siding with the state and all its power against a single woman to force her to violate what she obviously deeply believes and to contradict her own conscience on this matter. Now, I had thought the ACLU, despite some of its wild positions, stood up for the individual against the state in cases like this. We do. The only individual here is not Mrs. Smith. The individuals here are the renters of the state of California. And we're not seeking to force Mrs. Smith to do anything. As I said before, if she feels strongly enough that her rental practices have to be motivated by religious beliefs despite what state law says. She doesn't have to be in the rental market. The point here really comes down to what's the more important, what is the more important principle? Civil rights, freedom, freedom and open civil housing rights on the, the one hand. Your idea of civil rights to the first amendment. Now, let me give you another example. Let's suppose Mr. Braden, and this is purely hypothetical, one of his children came home with someone and said, you know, we want to shack up for the night, my boyfriend and I. Mr. Braden would have a perfect right to say, not in my house, you don't, out onto the street. Now, yes. Mrs. Smith, it seems to me, has the same right. It seems to me you miss a rather important distinction, Mr. Buchanan. Mrs. Smith is involved in the commercial housing market. Mr. Braden, in your example, is not. You well, mean, uh, I don't she, think the first... I mean, it's her property. She rents, no, it, she rents for a living. She makes a living That's renting. Right. You know, there's a difference. She's in business. I don't That's think right. that just because uh, someone with religious beliefs is in the marketplace means that they totally lose their First Amendment rights. Well, let me rights. ask you about the oh, free I don't exercise either. of religion. Does the free exercise of religion mean, Mr. Lawrence, that you can disturb your neighbors by 
by constantly singing hymns all day? No. no. Or, or by uh, praying loudly but in the front the yard? What's the compelling state interest? To promote fornication? To, to, well, to exactly. protect people that are no, living together you're, outside you're, of marriage? But you're, I, the, I don't see any compelling but, but, interest but there. You, you would the prevent important two people from getting housing, over uh, roofs over their heads, because of Mrs. Smith's roof. I don't no, think there's a problem. Mrs. Smith's roof. Now, tell us the compelling state interest. Uh, the compelling Cole. state interest is in fair and open housing. It's in making sure that single mothers with children, the primary beneficiaries of the marital status discrimination yeah, law, but this, we're aren't not discriminated dealing, against. We're not dealing with a single mother with children. We're dealing with people shacking up. Now, what yes, is Mr. the compelling state interest there? Mr. Buchanan, the compelling state interest relates to marital status discrimination. You would have right. the protection of the law when you, you like know, what the you're beneficiaries saying is, what you're and saying you would not is, have it when you don't like them. You say, what you're saying is the compelling state interest is California wants to put shacking up on the same level with marriage, which is exactly what they've done here. Common and law marriage. No. It seems to me that doesn't come before the First Amendment. No, Mr. Buchanan, what I'm saying is that the compelling state interest is in preventing people from being denied housing either because they are married or because they aren't married. That's what the California law is about. All right, let me ask you, if four gays wanted to rent that apartment, would she have to rent to them as well? I believe under <laughs> California state law she would. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, well, when we come back, another question of public morality, and not unexpectedly, it's up in San Francisco. The Board of Supervisors has just voted 10 to zip to provide the live-in gay lovers of city employees the identical health benefits that are provided to husbands or wives. Is this progress or yet another manifestation of social decline? What you're about to see is a sim. Brushstrokes, runs, streaks. Now consider the new Wagner Power Painter. It has patented controls for precision, a convenient backpack for big jobs. It paints smoothly and evenly over cracks and tough surfaces. Why did we ruin this beauty? So you wouldn't ruin this one. Wagner, not just a whole lot faster, a whole lot better. Ready? L.A. Uh, the L.A. office. L.A. L.A. Uh, What's your code? Okay. I'm not... Um, okay, Boston. Boston. Normal, right? Uh, no. Chicago? Chicago. <clears throat> Richard? Look, you have the MCI bill. Yeah. I have AT&T. Yeah. MCI does it all in one. AT&T's bills are all over the place. Oh. You want to switch? Definitely. MCI. We are the better long-distance company. Think your new car is protected against rain, snow, salt? Keep thinking. Today's unibody cars have hidden areas that will rust. They need state-of-the-art rust protection. That's why Zbart invented new super rust protection. It penetrates seams and crevices, covers areas car makers, car dealers, and others ignore. Covers you with a lifetime warranty and free reapplications. New Zbart super rust protection leaves all others in the rust. Now get $100 off the Zbart total protection package. Which is more extraordinary? Vidal Sassoon's Salon Premium Hair Products. Or the woman who uses them. Vidal Sassoon. If you don't look good, we don't look good. Welcome back. In San Francisco, the Board of Supervisors has voted 10 to zip to give the live-in gay lovers of civil servants the same health benefits granted wives and husbands of city workers, thereby putting homosexual relationships on the same legal plane as traditional marriages. San Francisco's gay community is calling it a landmark of human rights, but not everyone agrees. Mr. Coles of the American Civil Liberties Union now, tell me why you, I mean, do you believe that homosexual marriages in this country should be treated identically with uh, normal heterosexual marriages between a man and wife? I suppose, and I suppose it depends on what you mean. Do I think probably that they ought to have the same legal status? Yes, I probably think they ought to. The real question is, is, do you have two people undertaking the same sorts of obligations and commitments to each other? If you do, there's no reason in law to treat the two relationships differently. I've got one question here. It says domestic partners, is that's what they're defined as, are two people who have chosen to share one another's lives in an intimate and committed relationship of mutual caring. 
Now, how, suppose two bachelors said, uh, look, uh, we want the domestic partner's uh, exemption or we want to get the health benefits. If one of us gets sick, the other gets them. How do they prove their domestic partners? Well, the most important... Or how do you prove they're not? Well, most of the important, the most important qualifications of domestic partnership, as you probably saw, is one, that people live together, and secondarily, that they undertake an obligation for each other's basic support. I don't think people who don't have a deep commitment to each other are going to legally obligate themselves well, to be responsible for each other. Suppose, suppose two bachelors said, all the bachelors who got roommates, three and four of them out there, said, let's do that, gives us free health benefits. I think that I as long as somebody's willing to undertake the basic commitments, n the city of San Francisco, unlike any state, is not going to ask what people do when the door is closed. We don't ask that about marriage, Mr. Buchanan. I don't see why we should mm -hmm. ask it about domestic partnership. So anybody can get in on this deal? Well, no, anybody well, can't get in on this deal, Mr. Buchanan. You've got to undertake that very serious joint support obligation. The, the law says domestic, you read it, the law says domestic partners are any two people who have chosen to share one another's lives in an intimate and committed relationship. Can polygamous couples uh, be domestic partners under the San Francisco ordinance? No. Why not? Why not? Isn't that unfair because it discriminatory? Says you, because it Why says are you says discriminating you against that? Because it says any two people. That's well, right. It, it has to be I two people. I think what you're... There's still in our culture a bias against polygamy, but the one against sodomy is breaking down. Maybe that's all it's saying, because I don't see how you can draw a line there between those well, two. Well, look, and, and well, California, law, California state law has drawn a line on polygamy and on bigamy, and there's nothing we can do about that, even if well, we want to. Well, you would do something if you could, wouldn't you? I don't know. Nobody's asked us to do anything about it, Mr. Well, Buchanan. Well, Are well, you making a around. request? Well, well, just, a be minute, around. just a minute, Pat and Mr. Lawrence. Here we have a city which is got a very large percentage of homosexuals who live there. And they are entitled to the rights of American citizens, the same as you and I and Pat. What is wrong with letting them with a cohabitation ordinance which permits them to be treated as we are? What's I, wrong with it? I think our culture, the stability of our culture is built on heterosexual married couples, not giving uh, legal recognition to every type of sexual perversion that people want to well, happen to be. They hard. don't think it's perversion. No, it's not perversion Tom, to them. You used to argue a long time ago that marriage and the family were really central building blocks of society. They are. You are now putting a I, relationship like this on the same level as the family. No, they I got, am I guess trying they to right prevent. To... I am trying to prevent you from taking roughly 13 to 15 percent of the American citizens and put them in second-class status that first because it, they have sexual habits which you don't like first and I don't like first but your numbers are ridiculous it's closer to two or three percent secondly you're talking about people who engage in a kind of behavior that most people think de is depraved and third you yourself have said you think marriage is the foundation the building stone of society and you're putting this relationship on a par with it okay do you think Caesar was depraved if he, he might have homosexual you I'm think not T, sure. You think T.E. Lawrence was depraved? There have been many homosexuals famous for their achievements in history. Yeah. I don't think they ought to, we ought to make second-class citizens out of them. They did depraved right. things if they engaged in these kinds of All acts. Right. And you know it as well as I, Mr. Braden. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lawrence. And thank you out in San Francisco. And thank you, Mr. Braden. For being Braden. our guest on Crossfire. Pat and I will be back in just a minute. Good evening, I'm Lou Waters. CNN's Prime News is next. China, an apparent power vacuum amid reports troops may be withdrawn and the premier driven from power. House Speaker Jim Wright is defended against allegations of wrongdoing before the House Ethics Committee. The Ayatollah Khomeini is in the hospital following surgery. And an update tonight on the jogger attacked in New York Central Park. Prime News is next. Join us. Employment rose a fraction of a percentage point last month. Oh, the labor demand and oil price, price increased to take a The consumer price index jumped six tenths of one percent. Fear of inflation month. caused jitters in the financial market. Volatility, uncertainty, the unknown. Helping people reach their financial dreams requires an understanding of each person's goals. At Merrill Lynch, we pride ourselves on getting to know you, one by one. Merrill Lynch, a tradition of trust. The handsome, dashing Ford Aerostar for 1989. It's really quite a van about town. Traveling with the sports crowd. Playing the market. Escorting ladies. Pulling its own weight. Staying out all night. 
and powering its way to the top. Ford Aerostar. It's in a class by itself. Get a $400 cash bonus on 89 Ford Aerostar. Attention all fat fighters. Medical brainwashing may be the answer to your dieting nightmares. Meet a doctor who says he can brainwash your pounds away. Plus Bob Hope. All tonight on Larry King Live, 9 Eastern on CNN. If I were going to create the perfect place, I'd start with the north. I would carve out rivers and rolling hills, then ride the moon south and warm the skies with a tropical sun. I would dot the west with little hometowns and fill the east with excitement. Right in the middle, I put a great big playground. I would surround it all with water from coast to coast to coast, and I'd give it a name, Florida. Pat, uh, let's get back to Mr. Smith and religion. Suppose that you come to me, I'm a landlord, mm -hmm. I'm renting houses, and you come to me and ask to uh, have a room or a, an apartment, and I say, uh, Mr. Buchanan, I'm sorry. You, I found out that you are a Catholic, and I happen to be a Protestant, and my religion forbids me to rent to you. Well, my own view is if you only got a single rooming house, you ought to have a right to do it. But religion is one thing. On this thing, what you're going to get is her First Amendment rights, Tom, Ms. Smith's, are going to conflict with this ordinance which was really ideologically driven. I hope it goes to the Supreme Court. Mrs. Smith is going to win this one. No, she won't. Not against the public interest. From the left, I'm Tom Braden. Good night for Crossfire. What is the public interest in shacking up? The From the right, interest... Pat Buchanan, join us tomorrow night for another edition of Crossfire. I was a vice president of a Fortune 500 company. I had a beautiful family, a big house in the suburbs, everything I wanted. Then I got into cocaine, and I almost lost it all. It's a lie that cocaine's not addictive. I didn't choose to be an addict.